Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to resume our reading of Who Was P.T. Barnum from our Who Was series biography unit. And we left off at chapter number five, which was Meet General Tom Thumb. Here we go. In late 1842, Taylor learned about an unusually small boy named Charlie Stratton, who lived in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Taylor went to meet him and found a bright-eyed five-year-old who was less than two feet tall. He weighed only 16 pounds. Doctors thought it was unlikely he would ever grow much more. Taylor offered the boy's parents a contract for Charlie to perform at the American Museum. Charlie and his mother came to New York and Taylor put together a show just for him. He was a quick learner and had a good sense of humor. He loved to tell jokes and make people laugh. Taylor knew audiences would love him. He worried about Charlie's young age, though, because people might think he would soon grow to be an average height and he wouldn't seem so special. So Taylor made some changes. He said that Charlie was 11 years old. The ads also said he was British and that his name was General Tom Thumb. Taylor thought being British sounded much fancier than being from Connecticut, and it was funny to call a tiny boy General. From then on, everyone knew Charlie as Tom Thumb or simply the General. The general was an instant hit at the museum. He performed comedy routines, he sang, he danced, he talked to the audience. Children were allowed to come onto stage and compare their own height to Tom's. Charlie performed at the museum and on tours across the country, but Taylor felt he was ready for a bigger stage. In January 1844, Taylor, Charlie, and his parents left for Europe. Taylor felt terribly homesick as the ship left port. He would miss Charity and their daughters, Caroline, Helen, and their one-year-old baby, Francis. But he knew he could make Charlie performing as General Tom Thumb an international star. Phineas Taylor Barnum and his traveling show arrived in England after 18 days at sea. He rented a house in a very nice part of London. He contacted news editors and members of British nobility and invited them to meet Tom Thumb. This showed up in this stirred up interest in the show. Soon after the performances began, Tom Thumb received an invitation to come to Buckingham Palace and meet Queen Victoria. This was a huge honor. Tom Thumb impressed her with his fine manners. Queen Victoria herself gave Tom a tour of the paintings. They were invited back many more times. The Queen's interest in little Tom Thumb made him very popular. Important people wanted to meet Tom. He agreed to private shows and also performed for huge theater audiences. Taylor and Tom were making plenty of money. Taylor even had a carriage built for Tom pulled by very small ponies. Everything was going well and Tom's popularity was growing. He was earning $500 a day for his performances at a London theater. His parents earned money from selling souvenirs and pamphlets about their son. But then Taylor received some, received some tragic news. His youngest daughter, Frances, had died. She was less than two years old. Taylor was deeply saddened, but for the next few years, Taylor and Tom Thumb still toured Britain and Europe, and he made sure that Charity and his older daughters joined him when they could. In 1847, General Tom Thumb returned to North America. Taylor decided to stop managing the Thumb Show a year later. He was ready to return home to Charity, Caroline, Helen, and a new baby, Pauline, in New York. The tour had been a huge success. By the time they parted, General Tom Thumb had become a star, and P.T. Barnum was a famous showman. Their names were known all over the United States and Europe. They had earned a lot of money together as well. Taylor and Charlie remained friends for life. I hope you enjoyed hearing chapter five of our Who Was P.T. Barnum book.